Welcome to uh, Dillon Town Council Update. I'm Mayor Kevin Burns and with me is Town Manager Tom Breslin. Um, we just want to give you a quick update for our meeting of October 7th, 2014. Uh, we had our work session and regular, regular council meeting. Um, did go over a few things in our work session. Uh, first we had Joel Cochran in from, uh, from, from Summit County uh, Government to talk about our multi-hazard mitigation plan. Um, that's uh, for anyone who, who uh, hasn't heard of this, this is a, a countywide uh, um, um, uh, hazard plan that each town has specific chunks of. So we went over the, the Dillon part of that. Um, right. For t you know, if, like what happens if Dillon is hit by an earthquake or a wildfire or you know, massive flooding or something. And uh, I think you know, part, of the, um, part of what comes out of all this is that Dillon's actually is, is pretty safe from a lot of stuff, which is kind of nice. All right, but you identify your assets and <laughs> yeah. For, for the record and that all goes to FEMA and yeah yeah one of the one of the important things about having this program is that if you you know if there is some disaster like what you saw at the with um, the, the flooding down in Boulder uh, mm -hmm. last year uh, FEMA can come in and give federal dollars to uh, uh, to, to, to rebuilding to you know uh, controlling to um, to that sort of hazard control and all, all mm -hmm. that good stuff so yeah yeah so uh, and that's it's, it's kind of cool it's uh, it seems like my understanding is every single time we go through this hazard plan uh, different partnerships around the county there's like there's more partners around the county people who kind of buy into the program which is uh, makes it safer for for everyone which is mm -hmm. kind of nice so yep yeah. uh, next item on the agenda uh, for our work session we had our, our our monthly organizational committee meeting which is with um, Carrie McCool who's do, doing some uh, consulting work for the town with uh, in terms of economic development and the organizational committee uh, conveniently comprises all the members of the town council. Um, and that's where we really review all the other kind of committee work that goes on in town. Uh, it's, it's a program that we've been doing for, what, the last six months or so? Yes, I got in. It was about three months. Yeah. I came in in July, and it was running for about three months. Yeah. yeah. So, and, the, you know, we're, we're, we're starting to see these, these committees that we've put together, our, uh, our marketing committee, our design committee, our economic development committee, coming up with work plans for what they want to do for the next 12 months and how they're going to, um, any, everything from, you know, low-hanging, easy fruit to kind of long-term plans on, uh, on the type of development that we want to see in the town of Dillon, the kind mm -hmm. of services that we want to provide, sort of amenities, um, what type of summer programming is most effective, all, the, all that stuff. And uh, we have a, some really cool committees that are uh, kind of reviewing everything we're doing now and seeing how we can be more effective, which is great. And uh, there's quite a bit of citizen involvement mm -hmm. in that, yeah. which has uh, been very helpful to the council. Yeah, so. yeah, the true citizen committees. And as I said, we're, um, you know, we, we we got to see some of the some some of the uh, draft documents that are coming up through those committees, and we're, we hope to have some some finalized stuff uh, by the end of the year that'll help us kind of decide what we what we want 2015 to look like based on uh, based on some of the input from from these committees. So it's mm -hmm. it's really exciting stuff. Um, then we got to the really exciting stuff, which is continued discussion of uh, of our of our budget, which you know every every town in the county is going through right now, and we. Uh, uh, this time we got to talk about our special funds and services. Um, we've gone over, gone over our capital budget, we've gone over our, our general fund, and this is all the, the special little stuff. We have a, some special revenue funds, we have our debt service funds, uh, Dillon Urban Renewal Authority funds, uh, the Summit County Telecommunications Consors Consortium, we're the fiscal agent for that, and uh, that's, that's what allows you to, to watch this excellent programming today. Um, and then the, uh, and then uh, we, we went through some of the nonprofit grant recommendations that our grant committee came up with, um, and most of the most of those funds, it's really, uh, you know, it's important to go through. But a lot a lot of those are, you know, um, uh, a lot of those funds are driven by grants we get or funding we get from other sources beyond just the normal tax revenue base. So they sort of they act they usually act fairly mechanically. We get sort of a certain. A certain amount in every year that's not necessarily under our control, and then it's just about making sure that we're managing those funds appropriately. Yep. And that yeah. one highlight that Kevin is the debt service fund. Mm -hmm. Will this is the last year we'll be paying on that debt service, so yeah. we'll be free and clear on that. Yeah, that's really exciting. We're 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 about to yeah about to zero out our debt service, which is uh, which which is fantastic, and we'll be. Um, you know, hopefully, uh, hopefully, hopefully that'll be a condition that we'll have for a while, but yeah. you never know. <laughs> yeah. so. Next on the agenda. We did a, uh, we had a discussion of the local licensing options, whether or not the town council would serve as a local licensing authority for both uh, liquor and the marijuana licensing program. And we took some recommendations from the, uh, from the town attorney uh, and laid out our options really, and he's gonna pursue them, whether we want an independent, say, uh, uh, an attorney or a judge or independent person to evaluate and hold the show cause hearings 
and and the council wouldn't would mm. then be removed from that. Yeah. So. Yeah, and uh, you know it's it's worth mentioning a lot of this discussion came up that as we as we were going through our own marijuana regulations, we decided that we wanted to have the same authority be in charge of both liquor and marijuana. Yeah. And I started looking to see how, you know, what are sort of the best practices around the state. And um, one of the things that our town attorney brought up was uh, sort of a list of what a lot of other towns uh, around Colorado were doing. And there's a few, there's a few towns that still, that still have their, their licensing authority be the, the town council or board of trustees or what have you. But those are really, really small towns. As, as you mentioned, he thought, you know, a couple of them didn't even have liquor stores in town. So that's, you know, an easy job to be the, the licensing authority when there aren't any, aren't any, and are, you know, aren't any bars or marijuana on shops or anything like that but what you've seen increasingly is that there's a separation between the, the the licensing authority and the town council whether it's the whether it's an appointed board whether it's a judge whether it's a, another an, another independent attorney and it seems like that's you know with the with sort of the increasing complexity of a lot of these um, a lot of these regulations particularly particularly with marijuana incoming um, <clears throat> what you're seeing is it's 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 a lot of, it's a lot better uh, you know better practice to have that kind of separation. So that's why we had a had an interest in you know making sure that we're that we're following kind of the the, uh, the government standard on how to uh, how to run our town. So we're one of the options too is is a local citizen board, mm -hmm. but that's very difficult in a small community like ours. Yeah. To uh, have that and you know have it work effectively. So yeah. So we're you know the the council was, was interested in learning more about if we could have a. Um, you know, either either a judge or I said independent attorney, and I know we're, we've got a, the, we've got our, our town attorney looking at looking into those options now, and mm -hmm. we're, we'll be interested to see uh, further updates as that as that kind of progresses. Yeah, he'll get back to us. Yeah. Uh, we also had a discussion, Kevin, about the potential to uh, put in digital marquee sign mm -hmm. down on an enemy where we have that static sign presently. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to go over with, we uh, met with CDOT because it's right adjacent to the road and they have rules regarding this. So we had a discussion with CDOT and uh, we sent a letter to them as to our understanding about what the sign can do and what, what can't be on it and things like that. And we brought that to the council mm -hmm. so that they could make a decision whether they want to invest in this kind of signage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, I think the result of that was that we can. We th there are some questions from CDOT, but it's, it sounds like what, the way it's working is that we can. You know, we can put up that signage if we want. We can, you know, put the kind of messaging out there that that, that we want. And again, um, you know, a lot of this a lot of this discussion was sparked from uh, last year when we had some some major backups uh, along the roadway. And you know, CDOT has some of their own signage, but it's not it's it's not really strategically placed to prevent. Uh, major backups from going through our town and if the, if, if the highway gets shut down and we had a couple times when um, when the road was the roads were so backed up that uh, emergency services couldn't get from one side of the town to the other so mm -hmm. if there was an emergency in say our Corinthian Hills neighborhood uh, during one of these situations you you know you, you wouldn't be able to go from the police department over to that neighborhood mm -hmm. and so uh, there was you know a lot of that talk was around like how do we how do we better communicate uh, options for folks to get off the road if they you know if there is an emergency how do we get you know how how can we uh, make sure that those cars that the cars are moving the way we need them to and so that you know it's hard hard to do that with a with a static sign that you have to go and change the letters out of but if you do you know if you have something that's that's remotely updatable uh, it's it's a really effective way to um, to communicate to folks that are on that highway about uh, you know potential safety issues, uh, potential road conditions, weather alerts, stuff like that, and then beyond that, there's there there can be extra benefits. You can you can let people know about programming that's going on, about uh, um, you know the like if there's theater programming, about if we have concerts down at the park, if mm -hmm. we're you know if we've got you know we're tr we're trying to build out year-round programming, it's an easier way to update people and all that great kind of stuff. Right. So. And it won't be, you know, it's not going to be uh, Vegas mm -hmm. dancing girls going across there. It's going to be an informational. It's going to yeah. be informational, yeah. and uh, yeah. you know, it'll be tactfully done. Yeah. So uh, I, 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 I was hoping that we were going to be able to get a few of our council yeah. members like motion captured yeah. and, and yeah. going across the, the signage, but it doesn't sound like that's going to be in the works. No, so, they don't. But. They don't want motion, so yeah. that's fine. And we're working with CDOT to go through the permitting process. Uh, Mm -hmm. and uh, lying out all the kinks and yeah. then we're going to have a, uh, I think we're going to actually have a public hearing on it. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, that'll there, be down the road. There has to be a process to, uh, to, to allow that kind of sign usage for the town. So there's going to be, um, through the Planning and Zoning Commission, there's going to be a series of, uh, you know, it's a, there's public meetings on it. There's actually going to be public comment sessions. Then we have to do the, the nasty filter up through town council and the same thing. So it'll definitely be 
if people have opinions on it, that's def there's definitely going to be options for them to kind of come and come and voice voice whatever their thoughts are. Mm -hmm. so, um, yeah. Okay. Then through our regular agenda that evening, let me go through the. There wasn't really much on the agenda, staff updates, but we did go and. Uh, uh, Carrie McCool, our finance director, uh, presented the 2015 budget as she's obligated to do. And uh, actually, the 2015 budget's in very good shape. Just to give you a couple of highlights. Uh, revenue is anticipated to be up 6% next year and expenses up 4 so that's a 2% plus for us. Uh, we, the, the council has saved some money over the past few years and they have earmarked it to go to all these capital projects. So. Uh, when you come over to town, you'll see that the marina parking lot just got finished being paved yesterday, striped, it looks beautiful. We're doing redoing marina park, which is about halfway done. The hardscape and a lot of the features will be built in the fall, and uh, we'll put in the irrigation and the uh, grass and, and those things in the spring. Also, uh, there's money to... Uh, Look into doing a performance arts facility here. We've appropriated some money over the next three years to uh, see what that looks like. We don't know what that looks like, so we're gonna, we're gonna start researching that. And there's a bunch of construction projects and roads and vehicle replacement and uh, a lot of good things that the money is there for and uh, the council's appropriated it and then we're gonna go forth with a good sustainable plan to keep our roads going. Yeah. And you mentioned that the, uh, the budget was formally, uh, formally presented by our uh, 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 town finance director Karen McDonald, and that's um, uh, that's that's actually kind of a big deal for the public if they're interested in in, in the 2015 budget because that's you know that that's the version that's going to go online that's going to be available here at the town hall for folks if they you know if they want to review it if they want to make public comments on it. Uh, we do anticipate there'll be some minor changes based on whatever additional sales tax we get in between now and the final passage. But uh, this is pretty much the budget as you know as we plan on moving forward with it. And so for folks who who are interested in taking a look at that, that's um, as I mentioned, it's on the website. It's there's copies here at town hall. Those are the are those are the spots where you can get it. Yes, and there's a public hearing on uh, November fourth. Right. Yeah. So, so if you so if you do, if you do want to come, if you think that it's a good budget, or you, th you have some concerns about something, you can you can come in at, uh, during that meeting and. And, uh, and step up to the step up to the mic. Yes, and one other thing I left out on the list was mm -hmm. uh, we're putting in a new water tank, mm -hmm. uh, and that that is quite a big project, and yeah. uh, that will be kicking off. Oh, and I left that'll be kicking off next year, mm -hmm. as well as the uh, what was that? I'll say that uh, that water tank is nice. It's the the water tank we have that's existing has been in need of replacement for a while, and then uh, with the extra capacity, one of the nice things is that if we do get additional developments in the town of Dillon, if there's a new um, if there's a new housing project, if there's additional hotels built mm -hmm. or whatever the case might be over the next little bit of time, we'll actually have the water storage capacity to to uh, to meet the need to you know to meet any any of those emergency needs. If, mm -hmm. if you know if our um, if we if we get cut off to water, you need to have a certain amount, certain number of days of kind of water off, fresh water on hand and supplied. And um, we're developing the infrastructure now to, uh, you know, to anticipate future growth for the town of Dillon, which is great. It's, uh, you know, it's, um, it's, it's hard to grow if you don't have the, uh, the, the infrastructure in place to support it. So. Mm -hmm. And the, this golf course, too, is ongoing. Uh, mm -hmm. The infrastructure is not totally in place, but uh, there's yeah. a rudimentary version out there, and mm -hmm. it's going to be fine-tuned. And yeah. we'll have a grand opening for that uh, next spring or summer. Yeah. So I think you can get the, I think, yeah, you can get sort of the soft opening uh, in now, and then once the snow actually gets too heavy, you won't be able to go out there, but we will have the, the formal opening and everything uh, just uh, with, uh, as, the, as the snow melts. So. Yeah. And that was about it. So yeah. we're quite, we're pretty busy right now, although yeah. the events have wound down in town. Mm -hmm. This is usually what follows that, so next year's planning, so. Yeah. So if anybody, if anybody wants to come and said, we're, as, as Tom mentions, it's all about, uh, it's all about uh, talking about next year for folks who are interested in that. And our, our work sessions and town council meetings are always open to the public and we, we welcome folks to come in and uh, voice their opinions and just sit in and hear what we're up to. So yeah. thanks a lot, everyone. Thanks. <laughs>